Greetings, everybody. We've gathered around the table again today for another episode. Um, let's start off with our pocket dumps. All right. Uh, <laughs> this week I have the... Oh, damn it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, Kaiser Feist. Um, it's a fun little knife. Feist. A Feist? Feist, yeah. I've been mm. watching you front flip that all night, and then as soon as we go live on camera, <laughs> you flop in something. Oh, yeah. It's awesome. It's awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to take it off camera now. <laughs> yep. yeah. It's a beautiful knife. We talked about it two weeks ago. Don't. Paul had to have it in his life. Yeah, don't drop it. It sucks when you drop it. Uh, also, brand new for me, Benchmade Ballet. Not new to the world, but new to me. And this thing's been on my radar for years, and I finally get one, and it makes me super, super happy. M390. This is also, a nice little knife. Nice little knife. Makes me really happy. I am carrying my Cricket River today. Yep. Finally, you have a back in your pocket. I was going to say, you're all over the map. Last week, oh, it was yeah. the Chode, which is basically the size of your bolster. Yeah. On that. <laughs> and then you harassed me for not carrying the Cricket River, so I'm doing it today to be like, hey, I'm carrying it. <laughs> As you should. Out of spice. <laughs> yeah. That Banksy pod, though. It turned out good. You did a really good job. Hey, Thanks. Yeah. It looks pretty. And Joe. Something near and dear to my heart came back to the Sabenza with the Cocobolo inlays that have died dark. Cocobolo. Yeah. <laughs> came back like he'd ever left. <laughs> well, well, you know. A day at a time. I mean, well, it, it left for the time that Joe wasn't here with us to record. Yeah, that's fair. And I have been carrying the uh, the 620 and another knife in the meantime, but it was excellent to come back to this knife. And why did I come back to it? The ebony inlays. <laughs> I was wondering if you'd catch that. Yeah. <laughs> G10. That was the I don't joke. Know, whatever yeah. it turned into now. Yeah. Bog oak. Acid, <laughs> acid washed at Coca Cola. Let's call mm. it that. Um, yeah. We're here because this, the gravy train is all about the think twice, cat wants. Mm -hmm. We are having a look at Chris Reeves and kind of his iconic knives and why he's a large name in the knife community. True story. All of those things. Yeah. Joe has this fancy one here. We have some other offerings to talk about as well. Mm -hmm. We also are going to talk a little bit about Chris Reeve and how he came to be one of the most famous knife makers in the world off of one knife. Pretty much. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah no, gonna... this one's too fancy. It's got wood. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but... Well, let's, let's bring out the, uh, the standard then. Yeah. So uh, the main knife that he got most popular on is the large Sabenza, well, just the Sabenza in general. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I just wanted to highlight the differences. Uh, oh, we do. will. Yeah, we will. Okay. Longer. Quarter inch? Quarter inch longer? Is that with, what you said? Uh, within the half an inch. Half an inch longer than the average groundhog tail. Eight and a half inches long type of thing. Overall, with a blade length of 3.625 or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, four... Just over four ounces overall weight um, is the weight of an average pomegranate. So, if you put a bag of pomegranates against a guy with a bag of Sabenzas, <laughs> <laughs> who's going to win that fight? Sabenzas have uh, more It's almost right? pomegranate season, we can find out. Soon. <laughs> we just need a bag of them. That's a yeah. lot of Sabenzas. That's a lot yeah. of money. I don't think the cutting edge will let us have that many Sabenzas to have a bag fight with pomegranates. <laughs> So this is the plain Jane, as it's often referred to. Mm -hmm. um, the design really hasn't changed all that much since its original release. No. Um, the steel has changed a couple of times over the years, though. Uh, it has. Um, to my knowledge, four times throughout okay. the course of its oh. history. Curious now. Because I'm, I'm aware of three of the steels. Oh, 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 we'll get into that. But, I mean, before we get into that, I think we should probably bring up how this knife came to be in the first place, which is Mr. Chris Reeve himself, okay. right? Um, not born of the USA of Boise, Idaho. He's an alien. Originally, Legal. South Africa <laughs> okay. is, is yep. where he was born. Um, and grew up and became a tool and die maker. Just where he got all his expertise for making such such excellent cutting tools, and apparently had the precision, like he was wearing microscope goggles all the time. <laughs> I can um, see that. Um, and decided to get into some part-time knife making. He dabbled with the knife making back in the late seventies, early eighties. Um, yeah, you said joined military service, something like that. 
It wasn't me. We talked about it. Um, well, speak up now, son of a bitch. Let's, let's talk <laughs> I, about it now. I don't know about it, so I can't. <laughs> we're, 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 oh, the yeah. I don't have that information. You, 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 were off, you were off doing All stuff. Right. We didn't mention. I gotta take care of my cat. Come on, guys. So, yeah. all right, military. So, so basically, before being called off uh, for a three-month-long military service back in uh, South Africa, he found that there wasn't a supplied knife that he found acceptable. Um, so he turned to uh, designing his own knives, and that's kind of how he got started uh, with his experience as a tool and die maker. This was, a, for him, it was a logical step. And initially fixed blades. Yes, he started off with a military a fixed blade. Old school dagger. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Pop in the picture of the first one that he made here, the yeah. the integral one piece guy. The hollow handle. Yeah. yeah. He watched Rambo knives and was inspired. <laughs> it's cool. It's cool. We apparently, it. apparently, he did make one with, that had a. It was a hidden tang knife with wood handles. Um, but he found that in the dry, humid weather, that the uh, the handles uh, had huge cracks in them. They would rot away relatively quickly, and that's kind of why he started thinking about, oh well, what could I make that would survive all weather conditions? That's okay. where the integral one piece knife really came from. Okay. Um, until I believe 1984, when he jumped on board and started doing Chris Reeve knives, and started making Chris Reeve knives. Um, backtrack a little bit. Motorcycle racing throughout mm -hmm. all of yes. that good times. You know, making his own parts. You were saying. Uh... Uh, yeah, not sponsored, so no funds to replace parts. Things broke down, things like that, and because he was a tool and die cast, whatever maker type of thing, and apparently his precision was pretty spot on, that he ended up making motorcycle parts for himself to keep himself going when he didn't have sponsorship. Yeah, um, yeah. it helped his innovative mind to think and figure out different problems and help come up with solutions, and that was seen later on in different uh, inventions in the knife world that he came up with. Yeah, yeah, several inventions that are attributed to Chris Reeve, for sure. Mm -hmm. The main one that we have here in front of us is going to be the Reeve Integral Lock. Um, Commonly known as the Frame Lock? Yes. Yep. Uh, Sebenja, uh, or, uh, Spyderco has actually paid homage with their Sage series, um, but the Reeve Integral Lock has been huge in the knife world. Like, mm -hmm. now it is such a thing to find uh, high carbon stainless blades with titanium handles featuring that style of lock because it is it's simple it's a very good design the other one we might as well throw up okay. there as well i don't know where the small is someone yeah. else has it over there um now i would love to know in the comments some sort of reference so we can find it as well what came first large or the small yeah or, uh, or they released it once like we looked. We yeah, yeah, we weren't be able to. We weren't able to find anything in our little bit of research for this episode. So I'm very curious yeah. on what actually came first, the large or the small. We all kind of know the large as being the classic, right? Yeah. Um, but everything you saw, as far as the history of, never says kind of what got released in what timeline, yeah. right? So yeah, very curious about that myself. The small Sabenza has the overall length of six point. 875 inches and a blade of 2.94 inches. It's just under an inch shorter than a regular pencil. It weighs an even three ounces, 1.5 times as heavy as a tennis ball. So, indeed, indeed. do you want to play tennis with a small Sabenza? I do. With <laughs> your small Sabenza, not mine. I don't have one. I know, but like not with mine. That's all I mean. I was just thinking you shouldn't draw on things with this like you do with a pencil. No. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> No, I mean, if you're carving in the stuff, it's a small fine blade. I'm just going to write an essay here with my Savenza. <laughs> <laughs> hand in just a shredded piece of paper. <laughs> Don't write a note in the palm of your hand. <laughs> um, and this brings us to, well, I mean, after the motorcycle racing, you jump to 1989. Him and his wife, anyone have a reference on the way? Oh, I'm sorry, Chris, your wife's name is drawing a blank. She actually owns a company now, so I should probably be nice about the whole thing. <laughs> but... <laughs> She's always been part of her. Um, and, 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 and yeah. I want to say, wow, I can't believe yeah. it. Yeah, okay, sorry, Ann. Uh, you're probably not watching <laughs> 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 um, this. So, so 1989, moved to Boise, Idaho, and uh, went on that gravy train for a while and moved there, and in the next year, released the Sabenza as his production release model. So didn't waste any time once he got to Idaho. Um, and... Yeah, hasn't stopped. Yeah. yeah, you were saying in Africa that he was like garage, one man car, car garage that he was making. I was on the side of his house. Yeah, one. Some, okay, yeah. <laughs> I have whoever said things wrong. Yeah, he was literally building in his garage, like at his house. 
making knives. And... Which is funny because, like, when he moved, that's what he was kind of known for was even in Boise, Idaho, is just kind of like in a detached garage where everything kind of the magic happened, right? Yeah. So on to four steels. We'll get back to your topic now. It started with ATS-34, which was the steel that you were drawing a blank on. Mm -hmm. um, still a steel I love to this day. A steel very mm -hmm. reminiscent of a 154 CM yeah. is actually performance-wise what you see it referred to a lot as. Similar to RW. RW all 34. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Grimsmo, Norseman, so yeah. All, yeah, all those good times. Very fine grain, very good performing steel. That makes sense why you'd go with it. Yeah. Uh, 96 jumps up to the BG-42s. I don't even know that steel. Sounds like an airplane. It is, yeah. or, or a rock band. It's, yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. So we um, get a shack. So Knife shack. <laughs> you see it actually a lot in custom-made Bowie's. It makes a really, really nice clay temper and a haunt. Okay. So that's where I kind of know BG-42, but I'm not sure what it's even related to. Is it a to. stainless? Uh, or is it is like a high carbon? I want to say it's a stainless, but maybe even like a D2 semi-stainless type of thing. I don't know. I would have to look at a steel chart. Maybe we can pop a steel chart up. Yeah. Of I'm curious because of the Hamann. BG42. Yeah. yeah. Um, curious. Yeah. Didn't uh -huh. wait five years with the BG42. In 2001, him and Crucible Steel got together and made S30B. And everyone in the knife world kind of bowed down and was like, <laughs> I can't believe what you've done here. And now it's funny because everyone mocks S30B as not being good enough. But... <laughs> It's amazing what 20 years will do. Yeah. Yeah. And then, of course, most recently they've bounced up from S30. And I want to say that happened. Oh, I'm drawing a blank. You guys will have the reference, but I want to say 2012. I think so, yes. Hey, wait for it. Wait for it. These guys don't know. That was with the Sabenza 25. The Sabenza 21 came out in 2008. Yes. And it deleted the classic Sabenzas. Yes. And that was celebrating the 21st year anniversary of a Sabenza, not the 21st year of Chris Reed making knives or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Oh, since 2012, all Chris Reed knives have transitioned to CPM S35VN. In when, sorry? 2012. 2012. Look at that. Look at that. You know things. I, I know some stuff with words and steels. Um, yeah. <laughs> with words and steels. A memoir. <laughs> <laughs> that actually will be the name of my memoir, I'm sure. Yeah. Words and steels. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. History, steel, all of that good times. So, um, consistently good materials. He has had a heavy hand in choosing what they've been using, and nothing's really changed over the years, has it? Stop looking at me like that. <laughs> you were getting ready to say something. I know. Yeah. 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 Eye contact makes you uncomfortable. It does. Um, the thing that's really impressive is the fact that he actually was integrally a part of making S30 and S35. You bet he was. Mm -hmm. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, the knife world would never be the same without Chris Reeve doing what he's done. And then even them inventing other steels off of the basis of S30 and S35. <laughs> Crucible making S60s, S90s, S110s, S125, which no one really hears about when it's out there. Because it's crazy it's stuff. Scary. Yeah. And one day it'll come into the factory production knife world just like S90 and S110 did within the last couple of years, and all of a sudden you didn't just have to request a special batch from Crucible. You could just buy it. Yeah. Right? So amazing what that has done. Well, I did refer to these as plain Jane Sabenzas earlier. Um, they've done a number of different iterations. Oh, uh, my goodness. Yeah, yeah. So there's um, oh, the Combat Special. <laughs> I always forget what it's called. The one with the Starburst kind of pattern. The Wilson Combat. The Wilson Combat. That's what it so, is, yeah. But that's, that was just a, a store exclusive. Yeah, but they that do. That was a they, milling pattern. But when it comes to milling patterns and graphics, they do a lot of Chris those. Reeve by himself yeah. has yes. a plethora of Damascus steels, onlays, inlays, milling. Different anode jobs for the different oh uh, spot, uh, spot milling that they did. Like, for a guy who got famous off of one knife, it's not just one knife. You yeah. can make this one knife as personalized as an OM of cutlery when you're looking mm -hmm. at their yeah. Wayfarers and their swishes. And I love what they're doing as well, but yeah. And not the harp on the plain Jane. That texture that it has is really nice. Like yeah, it's, it's really pleasing really, in hand. Pleasing in hand, nice grip. You bet. Usable. You designed something good once and it didn't have to change with much. Mm -hmm. I straight up want and just a plain Jane. Like that's, that's what put their mark down. I like my gray, boring titanium. That's what it's going to be. That's, that's what it's exactly what I was going to say. Yeah. Is anybody shocked? No. no. I can't help but notice. <laughs> well, 
Yeah, I kind of like mine, though. Um, as far as worn in goes, yeah. the times of blue titanium thumb studs have come Oh, yeah. well, it was actually originally... It was originally that yellow on the other side, um, but it's been worn away from my thumb flicking it constantly. Um, you were a caustic. Oh, absolutely. But I love this He's knife. thumb flicking it constantly. It's, it's one of those things... Thanks. It's one of those things where even online you'll see lots of threads of guys talking about how much they've used their Sabenzas. Kind of like a last, last week I mentioned the guys who were excited to use their Medverts. Mm. A lot of these end up just being safe coins. Um, yeah. They are kind of expensive, um, but they have held a stable kind of. price for a long time. It's okay. Advanced Knife Bro baton to carbon fiber one. It was all fantastic. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. I need to it hurt my feelings. his warranty <laughs> so quick. It was awesome. Like, yeah. It hurt. Yeah. Me physically. Oh, it's fantastic. I will not be batoning my Sabenza, nor should no, you baton no. your Sabenza. But, but, yeah. but I appreciate that somebody did. But now, a lot of guys complain about scuffs and stuff. I mean, I've got all kinds of crap on my pocket clip. The, the, the shiny reflective is all I like up. the scuffs and stuff. It just adds character. Yeah, that, exactly. Yeah. That's why I like it so much. The and, stories that they have, the war torn, the snail trails, as yeah, they call well, it, which I, is dirty. I love dirty. Yeah. It's a dirty Everyone thing. Everyone calls but, it that. I don't but care. I love it. I've actually seen pictures of guys who have had these like just loose in their pockets with like change and keys and, mm. and other shit like that and just completely marked up. I'm like, yeah, them, they look gorgeous. The first time you get a dime inside the liner of your knife when it's closed, <laughs> you never carry change in the same pocket yeah. you carry a knife. So boy. That is a knife rule. Yeah. I think everyone should yeah. learn that very early on. Maybe keys in a knife. Even uh, that, man. I had two knives together and they lined up that they were like you know, I guess it like, de- for me I, I guess it would depend on how deep the pockets are. Personally I like the little change pocket for keys. But no, I mean as for, for as beaten up as this has gotten, um I haven't loved it any less. This has been a consistently good knife for me, and I've never really fallen out of love with it. It's now your variation is the S35. Yes, Correct. this version does use the S35. So, as far as an S35 comparison, you also have a ZT450 in your pocket. Yeah. Whose S35 do you like more? Ooh. I yeah, that's right. I think <laughs> ZT's is actually a little bit softer, in my experience. You've got to be kidding me. I'm not. Because Sabenzas are only rated to like a, like 55 to 57 or yeah. 57 to 59 or a... 59 to 60 I was seeing today when I was looking up stats. Okay, would they change it? Because it used to be softer. It was very way. soft way back in the day. Oh, actually. And that's been a big harp on Sabenzas. Maybe it was when they changed from S30 to S35 well, they stepped up their game. But there's Rockwell. Yeah, I mean, even on the birth certificate it might even say. Well, it will. So I'm going to look up. We actually have the boxes here and maybe this would be a good time to just... Talk about how, hey, they have a cool little pamphlet package. They have a really awesome microfiber cloth. They have fluorinated grease. They have the torque tool, or the, the Allen key. Dabbling on the grease and the torque tool. The reason that they bring it while you're, yes. the reason that they supply it is Chris Reeve encourages disassembly and maintenance on his knife. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Rock and roll, guys. Yeah. Rock and roll. I love the fact that you actually encourage that instead of putting some ungodly Loctite in your knives yes. so no one can touch them. <laughs> Even when the centering is off on a brand new knife. Brand new knife, I don't care. I'll use it. I'll love it. Centering's terrible. Okay? Yeah. Uh, if you didn't have so much Loctite in this back screw, I might have been able to fix that center. Sure. Thank you, Chris Reed, for not doing Thank that. Thank you, Chris Thank Reed. You. Now, with that being said, I'm going to rant a little bit. It's okay. 50, 59 to 60 Rockwell. 59 to yep, 60. These guys. Yeah, that's respectable. And you're saying yeah. that ZT might... Be not quite in, in that well, market. in my experience, it's a little bit softer. Uh, they tend to get flat spots a little bit quicker. Um, I think that uh, this is another way that I think the Sabenzas do really well. The heat treatment is spot on. Um, no one I've talked to has ever had a problem with the heat treat on these knives. That's and that's really impressive to me because even for companies like Spiderco, I've heard of problems with heat treat. I've seen problems with heat treat. Um, obviously, there was the famous Nalaka that had the zero grind, there was the issues. The S30 on the zero grind, uh, even Maximin, there was a whole bunch of people they, sending Maximin back this, with chippiness. Right? They've got this so dialed in. I, ha- I don't even have to Well, he invented it. You, you expect that to be last. Well, right? no, but so. I mean, like you were talking about centering, perfect centering on all these models. Like Well, and that's when we dabble on the 16 years of manufacturing quality awards from Blade mm-hmm. Magazine. Uh, in 2015, got inducted into the Blade Magazine Hall of Fame. Understandable. Uh, it, how, what took you so long is my only question <laughs> there. Like, seriously, the guy's been 1989, 1990. One knife of the year, uh, American made knife of the year, overall company of the year, how many times throughout won all of those awards um, off of one knife? Yeah. Jesus. Jesus, man. Yeah. 
So you're talking about the uh, the awards that Chris Reeves has won for his knives, uh, and who knocked him off the uh, well, yeah, 16 years manufacturing mm-hmm. quality awards. He won American Made Knife of the Year. He won overall Knife of the Year several times for several of his designs. Yeah. And then yeah, in I want to say it was 2016 he got bumped. 2016, 2017, I think. I got Someone a little Yeah. Fantastic yep. knife. Which has something to do with Lion Steel because Chris Reeve hasn't changed his quality. He's still known to be putting out the same thing that mm-hmm. he's always been putting out. Regardless of the controversy about him stepping back and letting his family members take over and whatever, the precision is still there. These are 2018 models and they are They're spot on, guys. Yeah. Like it's, again, centering, I, you, you won't see a bad one. It doesn't exist. It, it's, so regardless of the controversy, all the ones that we continuously see it's the same people working in the factory. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's like Paul Boss stepping down from box heat treatment, but having his apprentice for over 30 years going, yeah, you still know what you're doing. <laughs> Are you an apprentice at that point? I mean, I know he is. Yeah, but, yeah, like, but, yeah. Same idea where it's like the guys who've been Chris Reeves employees and 43 employees, to my yep. knowledge, is what he's got overall. Yeah. Like still super, super small for what he's doing. And worldwide production, 40 dudes. Like, mm-hmm. that's Husqvarna numbers in 1908 when they only had their family members <laughs> employed. Like, seriously. Or not Husqvarna, sorry. Uh, Grand Grand Brooks. Yeah, which yeah. is crazy, just knowing the demand for these knives that's out there. Even the plain versions, it's mm-hmm. crazy. Keep up that kind of uh, production and keep them just as crisp as they are, too. Like, that's yeah. super yeah. impressive. Now, that being said, it's the same template. Yeah. For very few different iterations, different of course. models. So that's still impressive to be that consistent oh, every day. Don't get me wrong, I think it's still very impressive. It's just this is about optimization. Yeah. They've really optimized their process, they've mm-hmm. things new, they figured out exactly what they need to do to get the best possible product they can. And they've well, just like the quality assurance awards have kinda signified, they bang on every year. And uh in this has been tried and true the whole time, but there has been variations that have yes. come out with. And there's been some things that have been gloriously praised for the last little while. One of them, 2001, coincidentally, the yep. Menandi was released. With an overall length of 6.375 inches, it is three times as tall as a golf tee. Really? Yeah. That's the stat you got on the Menandi? A golf yeah. tee? <laughs> At 1.5 ounces, it is about half the weight of a deck of cards. Fair enough. It, that's ridiculously light for it a is. knife. Even a knife that size, it is very light. It, it is, is not light. heavy. It is lighter than a carbon fiber 940, mm-hmm. which is also ridiculous. That's pretty cool. Now, there is a variation of the Menandi that's changed very, very slightly. If people know what it is... Please let us know in the comments before I give it a spoil it away. But there's only one thing that has changed since the Menandi's come out, other than the steel change. One design. Very, very small. Left hand? Nope. No. The interchangeable clip, I hope, was all in there the whole time. Okay. But, yeah. Um, so that was in 2001. Coincidentally, the same year that they changed from BG42 to S30V, they okay. also released the Menandi, which is quite coincidental and actually pretty awesome that they were also like, hey, not only are we going to tag team with a steel company to come out with something that's out of this world, we're also going to throw a twist in the ranks and give a classier gentleman a more option type thing, right? So, thoughts, feelings, yearnings for the Menandies. <laughs> what do you got, guys? The Menandies. Fine, guys, uh, rave and rant about this knife. Um, given how lightweight it is for the size, I think that that's, for me, one of the major selling features. It's tiny. It is absurd how light that knife is. Mm-hmm. It's still an excellent steel choice. Um, you can do some half-decent serious work with it. Like it, It's not stupid thin. So when you're saying super lightweight as well, no internal milling on these titanium. They are no. titanium yeah. slaps through and through. Chris Reeve has made a very reasonable weighted knife. And it's uh, a little bit hard to see, but you can actually peek in between and see the thickness of the scale in between the, uh, the lock interface. Like, ju- just in the... Oh, the actual gap there. bog oak scale yes. itself. Yeah. So, <laughs> basically, yeah, yeah. You, you have the milling for the inlay, but aside from that, yeah, there's no um, no lightening yeah. going on, which is just it's just absurd awesome. how light that thing is for... Yeah. And then, we jump forward in history. First of all, wait, 
first, 2050, before any of this stuff happens. 20, well, 2008, he comes up with the 21, which is yeah. what we've got here in front of us. He deleted the classics, and it was the 21st anniversary. In 2012, came up with the 25s, which were some improvements, some new bushings, some variations on the milling, well, that type of idea. Um, won some awards for that. Uh, 2016, discontinues the 25. But instead releases what he we now know as the Incozy. Oh, I'm having, I'm having trouble tonight. Oh, <laughs> From just your Kaiser over in the corner for a while and think about what you've done seriously. It's like it's yeah. Anyway, weighing in at just a little bit less than the average Granny Smith apple um, at 4.96 ounces, it would take four of these stacked on top of each other at uh, 8.4 inches each to stand as tall as um, Vern Troyer. Mini me. That's quite the stat. Four. Four knives to make a mini me. Four yep. cozies. Yeah. Is that a fair trade? Do you think? I don't think for no. Troyer. <laughs> <laughs> well, this isn't about what he thinks. <laughs> he's, he's not exactly alive anymore. Oh, that's right. I forgot. You no, monsters. No, no, I'm sad. Yeah, you're bullies. Um, we have the fortunate. Um, opportunity to review the one specifically with the Insigno blade. So not only do we get a classic clip point, we get the Insigno handle, but we also get to review with an uh, Insigno blade as yes. well as an Incozy handle. <laughs> there you go. Man, there's a lot of high words in this knife in particular. Yeah, <laughs> I like the Incozy Insigno. Like, I like that combo. Me too. Well, I, I like that blade shape. I'm not a fan of the double toils. They, they're awkward with my hands. They're very specific. To they your are. hand, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I actually noticed for the first couple times I've handled the Incozy, um, wasn't a huge fan of the grip. Today I was holding it and I did find a position that was actually quite comfortable gripping the Incozy. My position is comfortable on that knife. That's the difference, is the 21 for me. And Nigel, you get a variation of grip opportunities that make this so much nicer than the Incozy with mm -hmm. the forced double, See, double finger choil. And for me, I actually find it to be relatively comfortable keeping it in that position, even choking back slightly, coming forward slightly. And I think you and Paul probably agree, <laughs> but... Yeah, but there's an issue of, of if you can't exactly, even exactly. fit in the choil, yeah. Yeah. it's not yeah. No, I'm not saying that you don't have an issue. My I'm saying Paul and I... Mine to, order yeah. one does that, too. If yeah. you have the right-sized hands, it fits really nice. Mm -hmm. If you don't have those hands... Curse you. You're, yeah. So. Although it's the same size as a large size of Benza, if you have large glove hands, maybe you should check in just to see how it feels before you buy one. Indeed. But the overall response on it in Cozy has been phenomenal. Oh, geez. People have been exploding about a double double finger choil. And I will pull the trigger if that's what's going to happen. Yeah, yeah. And they did a lot of uh, very interesting changes to this knife. That they Indeed, didn't. they did. Yeah. Uh, internally, and we do have some pictures beautifully. That we can show of the classic, which is really cool in its design as well. One of the notable things is that the bronze washers are not the same size mm -hmm. on the even the classic. Um, the okay. face side is actually larger because you've got a frame 21. lock, or for the twenty one, and I believe for the classic as well, it was a long sided yeah. bronze yeah. washer. But it's a much larger bronze washer because you have a bigger face to work with, and they used a smaller one because of the cutout on the frame lock mm -hmm. on that. That makes sense. So it's a it's very lopsided on that, right? But on this one, they're inlaid, and they're uh, much larger and wider than the uh, than the pivot. So we do actually have internal pictures of the Incozy as well that we'll bring up. And now that you guys have seen both, if you want to rewind twenty seconds, look at the original. Rewind, <laughs> fast forward in time, look at the. You'll see some significant differences, but most notably is the washers. Mm -hmm. is definitely the most notable thing. The 25s and the Incozies had a very, very large washer on both sides with very large oil cutouts on them mm -hmm. and tracks, so it was kind of suspended. And you're saying inlay into the blade yes. rather than set or on top of into the, the, into the handle. Yeah. yeah, looks like it. Into the blade would be really messed oh. up. Don't do that, guys. That's a bad idea. Or, sorry, no, not inlay, but they're keyed into position. That's what it was. Okay. Um, you can kind of tell right at the top there um, where it's keyed in up against the stop pin, yeah. and that keeps it from rotating in either direction, which I think is, again, minimalist but very smart design choice. 
Um, do you guys know the other two minor differences other than the washer setups? Because I can think of two. I can think of one for the spacer. Oh, the, okay. Uh, I can think of three then. I guess for the yeah. uh, the yeah. lanyard. It's I different. can think of three as well because I didn't think of that one, and you can noticeably see you've got well, a blue anodizer. That's a difference between the models, not a difference between the classic and the twenty. Ones, I the Encozies were... and the 21s. Yeah, I thought you were talking about differences between the Classic and... No, no. Oh, no, no okay. The 21s, the 20... because the Classic has yeah. come and gone, and we don't have an example yeah, yeah. of that. Yeah. But the other differences on the two examples we've got here on the table. Well, the milling along the sides there, they went out deeper along the edge, so you can see a bit of a taper, mm -hmm. where it's thicker up at the top, thinner at the bottom there. Higher chamfering. Yeah, sure. yeah, I yeah. enjoy how they did that, and it kind of changes they the place. They do still the chamfer the 21s. But it's, it's a so straight much. chamfer. It's not curved. Yeah. 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 yeah, a sweep yeah. on that. Yeah, they that's have... actually one that I didn't know about as well, so mm -hmm. we're up to two. There's also the difference of uh, ceramic ball bearing or for you being used for, the, uh, for the deep end. Yeah. Um, that's three. And that's uh, three that I did not know about. I still know about the two. <laughs> the, the, the random hole in the handle there, they don't have that in those guys. The size okay, of the pivot is different. Yep. The size of the pivot is oh. one of the minor ones. Yeah. And the yep. hardware tooling that you need to adjust it is also different. Holy cow. Okay. Excellent. There's so many differences. Different sized hardware. You get three different torques, or sorry, Allen keys. Can we quickly go back to the hole? Because yeah, I sure. pointed that one sure. out, and I don't know exactly, but I, I do believe... It's on the small? It's on the classic it was version. older one. I, I yeah. do believe that it is actually a milling clamping device, and they figured something out that they knew no longer need to set the titanium into the holes and Makes build the scales. Yeah. And I don't know for sure. Again, in the comments, please let us know if you have a definitive answer on why that hole disappeared. But I personally believe it was because of a clamping device for their milling machines. They probably yeah. found that they could clamp just from that side with that screw. Or a pivot like screw or something like that that they no longer needed yeah. that. But I'm super curious if guys have a definitive answer on that. That screw is bigger, right? So it's significantly larger. Yeah. But this goes hand in hand with the larger washers as well. Yeah, of course. Of yeah. course. But what I'm saying is maybe like that wasn't a big enough hole to screw that with. Oh, yeah. But yeah, that I one can, is. Yeah, I can understand that. The jimping is different as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Along there, I was noticing that earlier. Okay, so that's again. <laughs> two. Did you just tell us the things that you did? So, did we mention the double thumb studs? There are yeah. girls. <laughs> there is one. It always <laughs> comes with those. Dual thumb studs as a lefty. Let me tell you how appreciative mm -hmm. I am that my thumb does not have to rest on the frame lock while I'm finger flicking a Sabenza. If you can no, see thanks. that. Well, I'm not doing it. I just want everyone to see what I do. With a double thumb study, it also gets my thumb off the frame lock, but also makes it deploy very easy. See, I'm not the only one. Except for on camera, where I'm going to make my point now. Yeah. With that. In your face. We love, we, we love dual thumb studs, guys. Yeah, um, yeah. They are a good thing. Yeah. So that's one of the two things. You guys have gone on a rant that I'm just so impressed <laughs> with right now. Like, let me tell you. Yeah, sometimes you pay attention. Yeah. It's fantastic. Okay, so what, what was the second and, thing? Have you dwindled? Or are we, no, uh, I, I got a few more. Okay. <laughs> Let's see if you can score it. Okay. Where's well, my second thing? Um, The stop pin adjustment. Is yeah, it's, both it's sides dual here. on this one. It's single-sided single on that one. So it's keyed, which is yeah. interesting. I had noticed that earlier. Um, okay. Not another thing. Not my thing that <laughs> okay. I was going to say. Um, they don't have the colored spacer anymore. Now it's just well because it's the yeah. Line but they now. did swap because you had dual colors. Yeah. And they got rid of yeah. all the colors on the back. So now it's there. just a standard. Uh, what well, I'm assuming is a standoff. We haven't disassembled this so, but I'm pretty sure you could just take that lanyard off and then that standoff would be there. It looks like it's wrapped around. It doesn't look like it's. Yeah. 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 It's around, not through. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what was the? Uh... Are, are we are we out of ideas? I'm gonna tell them last but not least. Um, let me think. <laughs> the washer is bigger on the lock face side on this one than it is on the Savenza. Yeah, we we dabbled on that. Yeah, Actually, yeah. both of these are larger than both of these mm -hmm. ones combined. Even the larger one is technically smaller than both of these guys. Right. And I just threw a small one up because the What's that on the inside that we need to play? There's something written right there. They all, they all have writing on the internet. I love that you guys are discovering stuff that I didn't even know about, but you B still have an H18 I can see on the inside see, on that that's guy. That's interesting. And then I couldn't see anything. <laughs> that's one. Yeah, this one has 
No, it's closer to the line you just line spot. control. They can't C dash eighteen. Oh, I have a flashlight. He's got just C thirteen. Oh, is it months and years? That's what it is. Mm. Oh, I knew about this way, way back. Uh, <laughs> letters signified months. So January, February, March, April, things like that type of thing, I believe. Wait, that one said. I didn't think that this one was from. I have to well, my, my birth card. This one's an A. April or August. If they're only using one January. letter. And this is a C. No, I think it's <laughs> numerical with the when it. Uh, like A equals January, January, B equals February, C equals okay. March, oh, okay. D equals April. Again, I could oh, be wrong. This on grab that. out the birth certificates. Yeah. C, C18. That would have been March, so no, that's not accurate. Okay, um, um, well, 18 is probably the year. Yeah, yeah. But, but what the letter stands for? I don't think 13 is the year on mine. I, I'll have to check the birth card when I get home. But. Okay, so what's the second thing that you've noticed? Lastly, and you guys were so close. <laughs> you so close so many times. Let's get rid of the small one because it really comes down to the differences here. Um, you dabbled on the bigger pivot, which is very, mm -hmm. very close to what the difference is. You guys dabbled on the one-sided stop pin, but one of the things that everyone was raving about, and I'm amazed that Joseph didn't know in particular because you're a forum whore, <laughs> is oversized stop pin. How much bigger the stop pin mm -hmm. is on the Ecosi compared yeah. to the normal Sebenzas. That it is. And the stop pin apparently for lateral play and up and down and warranty issues because apparently they're a little uppity about you're stressing on flicking them open when it comes to their warranty. They built an oversized stop pin on the Incozy. So cool, smart. Yes, that's that's the third biggie. For two knives that look so so similar, it's amazing how many differences there are. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I just noticed mine had little decorative lines milled into the sides. That's because yours is an off. Oh, it's it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> no one's had the heart to tell you. That's what's going on. It's a yeah, gonzo. Like, so. Jesus, this is an excellent knock on. If that's the case, holy crap. That's why the color of them would change so quickly. Uh, <laughs> this is crap wood. I said it's not that I'm a gross human being. It's that, well, it's that too. <laughs> Man, I wonder how that bog oak would look after he's living in my pocket. I don't want to know. Bog oak's too nice for that. <laughs> it's already been your like back. That. You have nothing to offer. It's been sitting in a bar Is that a challenge? Years. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm sure I could do some damage. Please don't. I don't have a lead. Anyway. You do some damage. Where's the bag of Sebenzas? That's the damage. Like, <laughs> like, a fist, fistful of, a fistful of Sebenzas. A fistful of Menundis. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, well, yeah, I'm actually kind of shocked I didn't notice that. <laughs> um, but honestly, I haven't seen that mentioned. And people raving about it That's online. Funny. So yeah. I, I like I most people, almost most people talk I'm going to guess shape. almost ten different differences. Yeah, there's all, all set there's a fair, fair like, number of them. And it's kind quite, of funny. Quite for, impressive. For two knives that at first glance look super similar to each other, as soon as you start looking closely, you can start to pick out all these little things that are just slightly different. That's it. Uh, overall opinions. What do we love? What do we hate? They're awesome. Um, <laughs> <laughs> The, the precision of machinery, they're so clean, so crisp, you will never find a lemon out of them. Is this knife worth $600? For somebody, uh, well, for somebody who appreciates high-end machining and wants an art knife that is functional, what's, yes! What's yeah, Bog Oaks going so. for nowadays? Bog Oaks not cheap, that's it's, for sure. It's really not. That's what I'm yeah. saying. Um, it, they use expensive materials, they execute them very well. Um, they're mm -hmm. very, very, very functional. I mean, this is... It's been hard to, to keep this out of my pocket. Um, even with steels like M390 out there, this knife works so well that I, I don't need a crazy expensive blade steel to go along with it in order for me to really appreciate it. Mm -hmm. I don't know that I could ever own a collection of like 30 different variants of pencils <laughs> like I know some of you guys out there have. Um, but I mean, just I can't think of a bad thing to say about a Sebenza. Mm -hmm. I can think of several. But <laughs> I still that, want one. Is that opinionated as a left-handed person? It certainly is. Okay. Okay. Well, not as a knife. I don't have one. No, I want a cement in my life. Yeah. But I want a very specific cement that's probably hard to come by. Plain, so, plain so, left-handed. But but as with far a right-handed frame lock. <laughs> I want a right-handed frame lock with dual thumb studs and a left-handed clip on a plain cement. Like it's. But, but, but as far as I know, I know. But as far as the knife itself, beautiful. You don't really have anything to complain about, other than your opinion of the left-handed. Um, you want in cozy, I have the same complaint as you, where my finger choils. Yep. You I, catch me on there. Twenty ones and twenty fives, I love them. Or mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, twenty ones. Maybe across the board. 
and maybe it's because I've carried one for so long that I do find this handle more comfortable than that one. Mm -hmm. um, but I definitely agree that like there's less in the way. Um, and the filling with the onlays, I've heard that from other people with the woods and the micartas, is that they may or may not fill your hand up more, especially on the smaller one. Is the sense. smaller one being thinner, but to bulky it up to be a little more of a usable size, throwing a micarta, throwing a wood handle on yeah, top of it that. to kind of fill it out a little bit more, I've heard is a better thing, right? So, yeah. The only thing that I would change is maybe putting a steel lock interface. I don't know, man. Like they've, they, 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 I'm pretty sure they well, carbonize the inside of their lock. I'm sure they do. And that's I, the I only would... thing that I can think of that I might change. Well, no, the ceramic ball insert is also what's doing your lockup on the Encozy in particular, right? Yeah. Seriously? Yeah. yeah. He's got the, a patent on that. Let's see that. Bitch. That's, that's something. That's what interfaces with. instead okay. of the steel on titanium. It's a Bam, steel on it just... ceramic ball. I need a flashlight. <laughs> <laughs> this is a world-changing moment for Paul. Yep. So as Paul's digging into that, I'm also going to point out that along with that sort of touch, as well as the integral lock, Chris Reeves is the first one that started to doing started to do a 45 degree angle on the lock face, as well as the uh, tang part of the knife where it interfaces to get the wear factor yeah. happening and yeah. to allow it to wear in. Huh, that's game changing in the world, isn't it? Yeah, that, fireworks. That, just, that, 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 hopefully, that, that just, just took away all my complaints. Be some fireworks right there in Paul's mind. All up in Paul's mind. That's a scary place. That's, <laughs> it's such a nice little touch. Mm -hmm. and smart man. Smart man. Yeah. And there is a trend for knives of his that have simple solutions to difficult problems that work. Yeah. And going back to his motorcycle days where he was figuring out solutions that he could fix himself. Yeah. Yep. Um, I've been giving overall diagnoses of grade lettering recently over the last couple of weeks, and I'm going to do it. And honestly, I'm just going to judge Chris Reeves nice as a whole rather than them individually. And I, I give them an A plus. I yeah. really do. Yeah. I have to. I, I've never. I've seen hundreds of Sabenzas roll my way in the last ten years of me being heavily into knives. And I've never seen a bad one. Mm -hmm. The yeah. only complaint, and I mentioned it before we started recording, is some of the lockup is inconsistent on how sticky it is on the lock stick, especially on the classics that don't have that ball bearing. Yeah. Um, but play with that knife for three to six months, and then come back to me, and it'll be as smooth as a bell. And I guarantee mm -hmm. it every single time. Every single one I've played with has worked in beautifully, and that's also something Chris Reed is well known for. Yeah, the break-in period. In the break-in period. They yeah. actually talk about it on their Frequently Asked Questions page on their website. Like, it's such a well-known thing at this point. Um, so yeah. that is literally the only variable I ever see on a Chris Reed. So... I think it's pretty safe to assume that all around the table is going to be an A-plus for Chris Reeves yeah, stuff. Yeah, I mean, like, you know, <laughs> okay, people talk about price point as being their negative. Yeah. And they talk about it's not that nice, and there's other knives that are just as nice on the market. Can I now use this as a demonstration because they're in the yeah, same price point? Yeah, okay. But this is a perfect example, actually, is the Benchmade Anthem, which is, my, in my opinion, one of the nicest Benchmades ever made. Um, I'll say, I'll say, say it. I don't care. Um, one of the comparisons that I want to lead out right off the bat with a large Sabenza and an Anthem. Put a hundred of them side by side. and Put a hundred Sabenza side by side and put a hundred Anthem side by side and tell me how many... I guarantee you they'll be more consistent. The Sabenzas will be. Out of the Anthems that they'll be Sabenzas. all consistent. You've exactly. got a hundred out of a hundred on no. the Sabenzas and you've got a 40 to 60 and I hope I'm being like fair with that number. I might even be generous <laughs> on flaws that you can find on Anthems. Mm -hmm. Really? You bet, brother. Yeah. As far as like centering, the blade grinds, there's grinds, a lot of variables. Yeah, it's Spring like tension that. lock stick yeah, that doesn't yeah. go away. Things like that. Yeah. Hmm. The, uh, I and feel lucky be... then because I got a, a fantastic load. Yeah, that you did. Yeah. Yeah. And I've seen good ones and I've seen fantastic ones and, and that's, that's why I can say it. But should also mention that, and this has been talked about a lot when in Chris Reeve uh, sort of tour videos of the factory, they have waste tables. Where if at the quality control points, they will stop through a batch of knives and be like, these aren't good enough. Mm -hmm. yeah. And for whatever reason, they don't just let it slide through. It's like that grind's uneven. And if we, if we remove more blade steel, it's, it's going to be the blade's going to be too short. Throw it out. Yeah. They start again, and they go through that. I can't, I can't. And they don't sell their seconds, right? Like no, they, they just no, no. no they, I can't they, confirm yeah. that they're a titanium supplier for other companies that are just using <laughs> their offcuts of titanium, but it wouldn't surprise me because it's still probably fantastic titanium that they're even turning away. Yeah. Like just because of they are who they are. They're efficient, 
in every sense of the word for their design, the fabrication, the marketing, like every part of it is... Uh, and the first time you pick one up, you're like, yeah, why is this worth $600? And if you don't know the history of what you've seen throughout the years mm -hmm. of just nothing bad, so minor bad, yeah, like baton it and you might have a lock fail on you, but... Shocking. Stop it. Stop doing that. Stop doing those things. <laughs> Use the appropriate tools. Yeah. I've got a Nessie upstairs. Beat on that. It'll be fun. But like, I have multiple knives that kind of mimic the the, the, the spirit of these knives. You know what I mean? Titanium handles. High nice, quality blade steels. High quality yeah. blade steels. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, there. I pocket dumped one today. I like them. Yeah. Yeah. So, all right. I think that sums it up. Yeah. yeah. A trendsetter with good reason. Indeed, indeed. A plus, indeed. So, yeah. Nigel the Smith signing off for now. Uh, I am who I am. I'm Dennis Swipers. I am the Iron Joe. And I'm XL.ca. We will catch you again next time. Ha! <laughs> we don't need bigger knives.